Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this deck and I'm gonna show you everything I don't like about it and what was done wrong on this build so that way you can avoid these mistakes when you start building your own deck. Let's get started. All right guys, so we're gonna start down here at the ledger board. Um, typically, you're gonna put your ledger board on. Before you do that, you're gonna flash against the house and all these things. But a few things that were done wrong here. You can see we've got the ledger board extending past the deck. Now this just looks awful. It looks like a beginner did it. Um, just doesn't look very clean and professional. You can see here that the vinyl siding was ripped when they went to install this. What should have been done is these rows should have been, these rows of vinyl should have been removed. Um, the ledger board should have been installed, J channel around it uh, after you flash it and then reinstall the vinyl siding. Um, so I think what happened here is they tried to get away with not taking this vinyl siding off and they ended up breaking it. Uh, another issue down here around the ledger area is they left this vinyl siding starter strip. I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a, a metal uh, vinyl siding starter strip that goes all the way underneath the deck and they just, they didn't take it off. I mean, it just, it looks crappy, um, not very professional, but so if you're, if you're starting one, if you're doing your own deck build, make sure you take that off. It's just gonna give you a cleaner look. Third issue down here is, again, you probably can't see it from the camera, but if I pull this J channel back, there is no flashing behind the ledger board. Okay, and so that's a problem. If water ever comes down here, as it probably has been, and it gets in this area, all you have is the house wrap to protect, um, you know, the siding on your house, or the sheeting, I should say, and then, uh, your rim joist, your rim board of the house that your ledger board is attached to. So there's no uh, flashing behind here. They did flash the top of the ledger board. So, I mean, there is a bit of protection, uh, but overall, this whole area uh, could have been done a lot better. All right, guys, so the next thing I don't like about this deck build is they put all of the rail posts on the outside of the deck. And this creates a few problems. Um, one of the main problems is that, you know, you can only get two lag screws in here uh, because what they did is they chamfered the bottom of it just to make it look a little bit better, which is fine. It does look a little bit better, but you don't have as much here to lag into to hold everything in place. Another issue with this is if these posts aren't sitting perfectly level when you lag them in place, you're gonna have to shim them. And you can see that we've got some shims here and they're starting to fall out. Now, when you go to shim this, it's gonna create gapping on the sides of your post where it meets your, your rim board. And so that's just, it doesn't look professional, um, just kind of crappy looking. Another issue with this is eventually, uh, and it's happening on the other side of the deck, these rails are starting to pull away from the deck itself, so they're leaning outward. And there's really no great way to correct it. I mean, you can add more shims here to kind of push it back and lag it in place, but it's just a temporary fix. It's gonna eventually start sagging even more. What should have been done and what I like to do when I build a deck is put your post on the inside and that way you don't have to cut, you don't have to chamfer the bottom of this. You can block around your four by four and lag through it and that just gives it a lot more stability. Now, another reason I don't like putting my posts on the outside of, of the deck is because of this. When you get to these corners, the corners of your deck, I mean, there's really nothing else you can do aside from just putting a post here and putting a post here. If you were to frame these with your post on the inside, you could just put a single post right here in the corner and your rails from both sides would attach to this one post and it just gives you a much cleaner look. All right, so the next issue with this deck is the top stair tread is level with the top of the decking. Now, if you were to hire a professional deck builder to come build your deck, they're never gonna do this, right? They're always gonna have it, your, your first stair tread is gonna be below the height of the top of your deck and it just looks more professional. Now, this isn't necessarily an issue. You can get away with doing it this way if that's 
just how you want to do it, it's fine. But you have to be careful because if these four by four posts weren't on the outside of the deck like they are, it could create an issue with your bottom rail here. So let's say you frame this and your four by four post was sitting on the inside of your rim board and it's blocked. And then you put this top stair tread level with the decking. Well then this, your bottom rail, uh, this stair tread may interfere with this. You're not gonna be able to um, put your rail where you want it. You're gonna have to lift it up some more or add another post in here so that way you can clear this stair tread. Now when we get to the top of the deck, you're gonna notice here on these rail covers uh, that they were mitered at a 45 degree angle and that's fine. That's typically what you would like to do. It's gonna give you a cleaner look. But here you can see we've got some really big gapping. They've started to separate uh, from each other. So if you're gonna do this, you're gonna wanna make sure that you've run several screws in here to keep these boards tight. Um, it's also a good idea to put some wood glue in there to help you know, strengthen that connection. Alternative, alternatively, what you could do is use some type of uh, like joining system to join these boards together. And that's gonna help prevent these boards from coming apart as they've done here. All right, so right here, what we're looking at is where the vinyl siding meets the deck. What they did was, you know, you've got your vinyl siding, they put a piece of J channel here, and this first deck board is just pushed up against the vinyl side and we're pushed up against this J channel. In fact, the deck board is actually a little bit higher than the J channel is. So what I like to do when I build is again, I would have taken this whole piece of vinyl siding off, put my ledger board on, and then I would have ran my decking, you know, up to the house. And then you can put your vinyl side and your, your J channel on top of the decking. And then when you reinstall your vinyl, it's gonna sit inside that J channel. It's just gonna give it a much cleaner look. As it sits here like this, we've got all kinds of leaves and debris and stuff that's sitting in the J channel that's, you know, wedged between the J channel and the decking. And so it just doesn't look as clean as it would have been if you did it the other way. So when you're doing this, you know, run your deck boards, then install your J channel, and then put your vinyl siding in place. All right, so what we're looking at here is our bottom rail that our pickets are attached to, or our balusters are attached to. And the way they did it was they just attached them to the face of these rail posts. So you can see, you know, top and bottom, they just screwed them into the face of this post. Now, that's, it's okay, it's not gonna hurt anything to do it that way, but again, it just doesn't look as clean as it would otherwise. So the best way to do this would be to run your rails to the inside of your rail post and then toe screw them in. You could toe screw them from the top and then, you know, from the underside, on this bottom one, uh, you can toe screw it from the top and then just run one screw from the face, but you're not gonna see all the, the heads of these screws like you do on this deck. All right, next we just have a little minor detail here. It's not a, a huge deal by any means, but as you can see here, this post was cut short and instead of recutting the post, they just cut a big shim essentially and put it in there. Don't do that, especially if you're building a deck for somebody else. Nobody's gonna be happy with that. Uh, if they come out and inspect the deck and see that, it just looks very amateurish, uh, not professional by any means. So whether you're building it for yourself or building it for somebody else, if you make a mistake, just go back and fix it. You're gonna be happier with it. The customer or homeowner is gonna be happier with it. So just thought I'd point that out as well. All right, so the last thing that I really don't care for on this deck build is the way they cantilevered the joist. Now, I actually do like the way a cantilever deck looks, but when you only cantilever the joist by two inches, it's, it's pretty pointless to do. What I would have liked to have seen um, with this is to just bring the beam up and attach the joist directly to the beam instead of doing this tiny cantilever. It was pretty pointless. Um, but again, it's not a big deal. The, the deck is structurally solid. Um, so if you like the looks of a cantilever deck, you can do it. But to me, it's almost pointless to do if you're only gonna do it by that much. So just thought I'd point that out.
All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. If you guys are just starting out deck building and you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to respond. Until next time, take care and God bless.